to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. When we get saved and come into the kingdom life, the Bible lets us know that among the many things that we receive when we come into Christ is that life, that Zoe life, the very life of God. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have. Now you know it's more than everlasting life. I think I may have made mention of this in this church, I, I, if I recall, that what God gave us is more than everlasting life. It was a limitation in the translation of that word. Zoe is more than an everlasting life because even those who die without Christ have everlasting life. It's just location, not possibility. They will continue living. Hallelujah. So the life God gave us is more than everlasting. It's a quality of life. And Paul begins to describe the riches of that quality. That that life affords you the privilege to access heavenly blessings given from the Father through the office of Christ. We are really examining the foundation for subjects like favor and so on and so forth. Are we following now? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. The Bible says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. Are we together now? That means when you become a recipient of this life by faith, among the many privileges that this affords you is the ministry of the Holy Spirit who now works in partnership with the Word of God to begin to unveil to you the riches and the blessedness of that which the life has been, that which is contained in this life you have received. Because just because you have received the life does not mean you are aware of the vastness and the riches of all that that life captures you must be enlightened are we together now please you need to understand that accessing the riches of redemption is knowledge dependent more than desire dependent it is knowledge dependent ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds or their hearts. That means if you lack knowledge and you lack understanding, you can be alienated from the experience of this Zoe life, even though it is a fact that in Christ you have been given access to that life alongside the provisions that come with that life. Did the Bible not say an heir for as long as he's a child? It says he differed not from a slave, even though he be Lord of all. So the experience of that child, one who is part of the fold, a beneficiary of the inheritance, and one who is a hireling, their experiences will be the same. Why? The gap is knowledge. So let's settle it for a fact that the natural man does not have any possibility of outsourcing any advantage by himself. The natural life of the fallen man does not capture within it any advantage whatsoever. If for any reason 
your life must capture anything that looks like an advantage it must be outsourced from a realm that is beyond the natural realm that's what i'm trying to say whether it is diabolic in context or spiritual sponsored by the holy ghost anytime you see any natural life manifesting superhuman advantages it already reveals to you that that individual knowingly or knowingly has fraternized with a dimension beyond the natural realm because by the natural realm the only possibility here are the things that are common to men are we learning but then that I said, if you come into Christ by reason of the new birth experience, you are given this life. And he says that that life captures possibilities. Among them, access to the spirit of truth. Are we together now? Who the Bible declares that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, that he will guide you into all truth. So even though you have truth, you must be guided for it to benefit you. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. Are we together now? Write this down. The awareness of the blessings of redemption alone will not bring us into the experience the awareness of the blessings of redemption alone will not bring us into the experience. We need understanding. We need understanding. That means just being aware that the life of God given to me is superior, higher than the natural life, that the life given to me captures within it possibilities including favor awareness does not translate into experience it takes understanding understanding means you must maintain the faculty and the fortitude of comprehension exactitude you must you must understand the dynamics of making that which was finished in christ to become your experience here and now if you're with me say amen, amen. now please look up one of the blessings that is captured in the kingdom life is the privilege of exerting dominion over time, exerting dominion over situations and circumstances. I call them systems of advantage. That means when you come into Christ, among the many possibilities that are contained in this faith life is the ability to find your way out of any situation there are instruments that have been deposited on our path in christ that if and when discovered now begins to provide an extraordinary life that means by default by the natural man the life and the template of the natural man nothing unusual should happen in my life are we together but now i get saved and in getting saved i discover that the economy of god runs in a way that if i walk in compliance with the word of god i will start meeting certain things on the way that must make my life unusual one of them is called favor it is not the only system of advantage mercy is a system of advantage speed is a system of advantage restoration is a system of advantage they are all scattered on your way so that as you walk with the holy spirit you will start colliding with these possibilities and the narrative of your life will start changing to that of a human being who is not a pure human being it becomes very clear and evident to all that someone else is supporting this journey you are no longer alone are you getting me now so regardless my background if you are to predict my future based on my background if you are to factor in the 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 revelation that i i was not born naturally in christ you now look at my background you can accurately predict my future and you will be right because there should be nothing no wow factor contained there except that when i meet christ the moment I come into the faith life, the Holy Spirit begins to guide me. There are riches and treasures 
that if and when my destiny collides with them it will begin to produce a certain kind of man that must compel the attention of all and sundry it becomes clear that this one is not a man walking alone again there is a system of advantage that has come to him hallelujah naturally speaking if i want to call someone from another state unassisted the only way to do that is to trek or walk and get to that location and meet the person and talk into his ears because the only part of him that can hear me is his ears and since his ears are not in close proximity but then someone can now assist me by giving me a phone what have you done you have created an advantage to my life i have redeemed time i don't need to run to that man and meet him imagine if he were in london but that you can give me a phone that is so efficient with one dial i have access to the same ears are we together so the person who began to trek in hope that he would talk to that man three days ago and me who now has access to a phone i would talk and we will be gisting for hours and you see how unfair life becomes relative to that man's experience it is nothing unusual about me i have accessed something my assignment this night is to stand in partnership with the holy spirit and hand over something to your life that you can hold and surround your life with and your results will begin to change in a way that you will be you will wonder and you will marvel the faith life is not an ordinary life the kingdom life is not a mediocre life however it depends on understanding one of the many systems of advantage that have been provided by the grace and the mercy of God to help the saints excel in light, to fulfill their destinies and then to live lives that are notable and uncommon is favor. Hallelujah. To understand the subject of favor, there are three things you need to know. Please write it down. The subject of favor is built on three foundations. There are three facts that you need to know in order to really appreciate the necessity of favor. Number one, write this down please. Destiny fulfillment and results are time dependent. Destiny fulfillment slash results are time dependent dependent that means why do i need favor in my life why is favor or why should favor be such an important necessity the first reason is that destiny fulfillment and to produce result in this earth you don't have all the time destiny fulfillment is time dependent that means if time is against you john chapter 9 and verse 4 is god speaking to someone john 9 and verse 4 let's hurry up john chapter 9 and verse 4 jesus is speaking now john 9 and 4 hallelujah do we have it projected he said i must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day jesus is speaking he says for the night cometh in other words fulfilling my destiny is time dependent i do not have all the time if i do not maximize time a time will come i may not be able to fulfill destiny that means if for any reason you were designed to live say 100 years and you get born again at age 40 from a spiritual standpoint you wasted 40 years 40 years is already against you are we together now you will need a system introduced to your life that can remedy for that 40 years destiny actualization is time dependent ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 popular scripture Ecclesiastes 12, 1 and 2. It says, Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, 
before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say i have no pleasure in them verse 2 it says while the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are not darkened and the clouds do not return after the rain do you know what he's saying he's saying remember your creator maximize your life when all of those elements are supporting you because a time will come they will not always support you if you want to dry your clothes and have it dried very fast you take an advantage of a provision already called the sun is that true when the sun is shining brightest you come quickly if you need water in your buckets you take advantage of the rain you don't necessarily create it you just discern and take advantage of them when they come there is what we call in this side of the world rainy season and dry season a good farmer is also one who understands the seasons you need to understand that destiny fulfillment and getting results are time dependent number two you need to understand that destiny fulfillment and getting results are also men dependent psalms 115 and verse 16 what does that mean to obtain results and to actualize your destiny you will need men this is the world of men it says the heaven even the heavens are the lord's but the earth has he given to the children of men that means if anything must happen in this side of god's kingdom you cannot do it in isolation with the uh, cooperation of a man are we learning now fulfilling your destiny and producing results in this kingdom is men dependent that means just like i think it was it was pastor jerry who was sharing not too long and he said it's possible for someone to not like you you know that ordinarily unassisted you are in trouble what if that man is a gatekeeper gatekeepers are people you cannot cast away you don't cast them away because they control systems and structures the only way you the only thing you can do with them is god will give you favor with them when a man's ways pleases the lord he makes those kinds of enemies to be at peace with you they are not the ones you cast because they are gatekeepers how do you cast pharaoh out of egypt when God wants to help you come out of that prison, he will make Pharaoh like you. But to pray that Pharaoh will leave Egypt is not a wise prayer because Egypt belongs to him. It's under his influence. Are you learning now? Destiny fulfillment is men dependent. Number three. The third fact you need to know that necessitates studying the subject of favor is that the whole world lies in wickedness under the siege of satan the whole world lies in wickedness first john 5 19 very quickly first john 5 19 it says we know that we are of god and the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one that's nkjv if I can have King James, that would be fine. It says the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world means everywhere, including your neighborhood, including the nation you seek to go to. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. That means there is no physical place of escape that exempts you from the possibility of wickedness, provided you are alive. There must then be a divine factor that immunes you a above and against this reality hmm. first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 apostle peter is teaching us now first peter 5 8 he says be sober be vigilant be sober and be vigilant he says because your adversary the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour 
So this, these are facts. They let you know that Satan is not sitting idle. He's not in one place. He's roaming around looking for any destiny that looks like Christ so that you will waste it. And that includes yours. Are we together? The revelation of favor is built upon these realities. That number one, let me recap again. The first basis for desiring favor is that to fulfill your destiny, you need to sustain the ability to have dominion over time because destiny is time dependent. Then destiny fulfillment is also man dependent. If you have time and no man can help you within that time, you will still waste destiny. And then if you have time and you have men and the realm of the spirit, Satan, who is the adversary, comes, he can still make you destroy destiny. Please believe what I'm teaching you. I know what I'm saying. What then is favor? What is favor? To be favored means to be given unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, and unusual access. Please write it down. To be favored means to be given unusual kindness. Unusual acceptance and unusual access. That is what it means to be favored. If these three things are not captured in your life, you are not favored. Maybe you have breakthrough. Unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, and unusual access. These are the tripartite scriptural proof of favor in the life of a man so when you say i am favored we don't need to argue prophetically yes but in experience we will vet you from the lens of unusual kindness unusual acceptance and unusual access this is what god is doing in the life of someone pastor jerry prophesied so lavishly from the depth of his heart let me join my faith with him and your your man of God to declare over you these three things in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God from tonight that grace that makes for unusual kindness receive it right now unusual acceptance receive it right now unusual access receive it right now please sit down hallelujah immediately you know the definition of this favor are we together? Aha. Uh -huh. You can know that this favor is at work in my life by also having unusual, an unusual dimension of rejection, an unusual dimension of closed doors, empty handedness. These are biblical indices. So that this teaching now leaves us in two categories. You can know without confusion whether favor is working in your life in experience or otherwise favor unusual kindness is there any man in the house of saul that i may show him kindness for jonathan's sake unusual acceptance how do you promote joseph who is in egypt knowing he's not an egyptian he said, I am Pharaoh and only by my word, only in the throne will you be second to me. Immediately blessed him, gave him all kinds of things. Unusual access. Access to anything that reaches the hearts of people. When it was time for Nehemiah to build, he went and met a king and the king not only approved, but he gave him the resources unusual access for someone in the name of jesus after tonight it will be as if you are dreaming you will find out that in a very strange way hear me you may have heard me teach that everything you are looking for is also looking for you but not this version of you mm -mm. 
it will keep passing this version of you and it's still finding another version of you may that version of you emerge tonight please sit down unusual kindness unusual acceptance and unusual access jesus who grew in favor himself luke 2 and 52 the bible says and jesus increased in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men he proved the validity of favor in his life by asking someone to go to a road where the streets divide he says you will see a colt that no man had ridden on that means there are people carrying things they've not been permitted to enjoy it because they are keeping it for certain people a cold that no man including the owner had not ridden on it yet he was taking care of it he said lose that coat and bring it and if anyone should ask you tell them it's not that i'm a thief the master had need of it i am the real owner of that you are only a caretaker keeping it that means there are people holding things you have even seen some of them but it's not for them they don't know why they cannot enjoy it and yet they take care of it because they are waiting a mantle that must come upon your head so that they release it to you and in the name of jesus i prophesy by the power that raised christ from the dead whatever must come upon your head to make what is yours to come to you let it come right now in the name of jesus please sit down hallelujah genesis chapter 39 is god speaking to us hmm. genesis 39 1 to 4 let's hurry up so that we can redeem time the bible says and, Je and joseph was brought down to egypt and potiphar the officer of pharaoh captain of the guard the egyptian brought him of the hands of ishmaelites and they brought him down tether we're reading to verse 4 please it says and the lord was with joseph is that in your bible it says and he was a prosperous man he was in the house of his master the egyptians three and four and his master saw that the lord was with him and the lord had made all that he did to prosper in his hands verse four and joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and he that had put his hands listen anywhere you see favor check it by the indices i've given you unusual kindness unusual acceptance unusual access here you see it in the life of Je of joseph exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 popular scripture and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass 321 that as ye go ye shall not go empty emptiness has a spiritual explanation when you see a man's hand empty you have the hands to receive yet nothing is coming on it there is an explanation lack of kindness lack of acceptance lack of access please don't forget this teaching tonight burn it into your spirit kindness acceptance and access Ezra chapter 7 and verse 6. Ezra chapter 7 and verse 6. Ezra chapter 7. And Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The Bible says, and the king granted all his requests. How many? Do you still see the formula again? unusual kindness unusual acceptance unusual what i'm teaching you is a revelation that the spirit of god gave me on favor the king granted him all his request but the request was according to the hand of the lord upon him not according to what the king wanted there was something on him that was making the king answer everything he said read it carefully the request was granted according to the hand of the Lord upon him. 
If that hand lifted, the king would say, you are crazy. What did I say yesterday? I've changed my mind. Ah, may something come on you, I repeat again. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. The world is too wicked for you to indefinitely have unusual kindness. Too wicked for you to indefinitely have unusual acceptance. Too wicked for you to have unusual access. Men are not even that emotionally stable to give you the guarantee that every day you come, there has to be a factor that is greater than emotions that will compel men regardless their vacillations to give you the same result. It's called favor. Now, listen very carefully. I want to lovingly make a bit of adjustment. For a long time in the body of Christ, we have thought that the only scope and dimension of favor in its definition is unmerited access. And that is not wrong. Are we together? But to, to say favor is unmerited, um, it is not exactly right. The moment you say favor is unmerited, it takes away the responsibility dimension from you. I can tell you favor is merited. Are we together? The only dimension and expression of favor that is unmerited is favor that is, um, that is captured in the redemption of man. And that is in that we could not die for ourselves. But even at that, there is still a responsibility to receive. Are we together now? Let me show you the secret of favor. Proverbs 13, 15. You're going to read it loud from the depth of your spirit. Are you ready? It's projected. If you're a Christian and you believe the Bible, please read it very loud. Ready? One, two, read. Uh-huh. One more time. Shout the first two words, please. One to go. One, one more time. The last time. That means there is bad understanding. Bad understanding is understanding that leads to the outcome you did not desire. Bad understanding. The Bible says good understanding giveth favor. Like you say, a woman gave birth to a child. Is that true? So now in this example, good understanding and transgression are like two pregnant women. Please look up. That good understanding is like a pregnant woman. When she gives birth to a child, the name of that child is favor. Transgression is also a pregnant woman. When she gives birth to a child, the name of the child is called hardship. Hardship is a child. Don't blame the child. The mother gave birth to the child. When your life is hard, don't blame the child called hardship. Blame the mother that keeps giving birth to that child. Theoretically speaking, every woman should be able to give birth to as many children. Is that true? Don't joke with that woman who gives birth to hardship. She is very fruitful. There is no barrenness with transgression. You put a seed there, your child is coming. Unfortunately, this child does not wait for nine months. It can come in one day. Mm. Good understanding, like a pregnant woman, gives birth. And when you come, you name, you come and meet the child already named. You are not the one who names the child. That naming ceremony comes directly from heaven. The child has been named before arrival. And a good understanding is such a fruitful woman. She can give birth every day. In fact, you know it is favor. If it happens more than once. If it happens only once, it is breakthrough, not favor. The proof of favor is the ability to make it repetitive regardless the surrounding conditions. Yes, sir. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. 
My apologies, I may not have the time to deal with this in details. So I'll just touch one or two things and then we'll pray so that we can retreat for the night. But do not forget what I've taught you. Favor, if it is favor, these tripartite realities must be captured in it. Unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, unusual... Because we are going to pray this this night. If you have unusual kindness alone, it's not favor. Uh -uh. If you have unusual acceptance alone, it is not favor. I can accept you and never bless you. If you have unusual access alone, you will remain a caretaker. Access to things you can never possess. Unusual kindness unusual acceptance ah somebody came to church tonight to learn something that you will carry and write this date and say i found the key after 20 years you come and meet pastor and say sir i came for this conference recharge and i found an authoritative scriptural definition of favor unusual kindness unusual acceptance unusual so next time you say a man is favored, don't be in a hurry to say so. Check. Do you find unusual repetitive kindness? Repetitive acceptance. Repetitive access. You will be learning that the greatest access is not access to resources. It's access to the hearts of kings. Can I tell you the truth? It is easier to open a treasury than to open the heart of a king whatever can make the heart of a king be open towards you is greater than the safe in a bank hmm. write this down please you are responsible for activating the flow of favor in your life you are responsible for activating the flow of favor in your life God is responsible for creating that idea and he's done so in Christ. But you are responsible. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it please. Say in the name of Jesus. I take responsibility and I activate the flow of favor. The flow of unusual kindness. Unusual acceptance and unusual access in my life and my destiny i want to run with you right now six keys i may not have the time to explain them if you hold these keys you will hang them like trophies and like badges symbols of honor as you triumph from one realm of glory and victory even to another i stand by the god of heaven who helps men and i give you a guarantee if you lend me your attention for the next five minutes and hold on to these keys some of you after the grace you will run out of this church and you'll be shouting like a madman they say what happened did you get a job you say i will not rejoice for just a job that this kind of joy is not for a job this kind of joy is that i have found something I found your word and I did eat it. He said it was a joy. Except you don't find it. If you have found it. This is the factor that has bailed men. Bailed men out of the wickedness. Bailed men out of the limitations of background. Limitations of culture. Can I tell you the good land is sitting on these three things unusual kindness unusual acceptance this is beyond a man of god sermon 
even your brain can relate to what I'm saying. This is not just a spiritual thing. You can know intellectually and spiritually that there's no favor in your life. And you can know intellectually and spiritually that favor has come. You can know the arrival of favor. You can know the activation of favor. Let me tell you this. When favor arrives, it starts work immediately. Favor is one of those spiritual qualities that does not waste time. As it arrives, it gets to work, including this night. Did you hear me? I said, including this night, including this night, favor is a diligent worker. It delivers the moment it arrives. I'm about to unveil six keys, but please lay your hands on your head and I want you to declare, Father, this is the list of my level in life and destiny. As far as manifesting destiny is concerned and being part of your program for my life, these keys, I receive them into my spirit. Someone who came to church, pray from the depth of your heart someone following online watching by television here is God delivering to you a system a major system of advantage one more minute one more minute I assure you you are not wasting your time some of you, your prayers of 2015, 2016, 2017 is being answered in one sermon. Pray! Don't be distracted. Whether you're a man of God, whether you're a businessman, whether you're a politician, the Lord wants something to rest once and for all. Forget about your background. Forget about what was working or not working. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, please, I want you to sit down and with the rapt attention that Elisha gave Elijah, I want you to pay attention as I unveil to you these six keys they came by study by learning from people who are carriers of favor with proof because there are some them the bible says we should follow that to follow them who through faith and patience not storytellers not assumers people with proof number one now that we have agreed that favor can be activated, let me run the keys with you. The first key that activates favor in the life of any man, regardless the situation, is honor. Key number one, honor. Please write it down. There are people who will never experience favor in their life. Believe me, because they have not learned the power of honor. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating. And where applicable, the rewarding of men for their uniqueness. If you do not master honor, you can be a child of God and you will fall short of the potentials as far as working in this system of advantage is concerned. Honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating. And honor is the rewarding of men for their uniqueness. Hmm. Romans 13, 7. Media, please help us very quickly. Romans 13, 7. It says, Render therefore to all their dues. Is that in your Bible? Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear honor to whom honor there are people deserving of honor there are many preachers 
businessmen, career people, young people who remain grounded. Listen, the anointing of the Holy Spirit was only supposed to fight what was caused by demons. So, before you introduce the anointing of the Spirit to fight over something, be sure that the problem was caused by demons. Because if it is God himself fighting you, the anointing will not solve the problem. Hmm. You don't know God fights men? Is it not in your Bible that God himself resists the proud? There are many people whose resistance today is not just caused by witches and wizards. Before they arrived, they found you already resisted. They only joined the resistance that was happening. So even if they are casted away, you will still find out that the situation is there because there is a fundamental spiritual law fighting you. Let me tell you this. Spiritual laws are vicious warriors. They do not die. They do not fear. When a spiritual law is fighting you, only God in partnership with your obedience and his mercy can bail you out. You cannot cast away laws. Please listen. Please listen. Listen and thank your man of God and his dear wife for investing in your spirit. Honor. We live in a world where we are experts as downplaying the sacrifices of people. You see people who have invested time, energy, and saying, oh, they were just lucky. They were just fortunate. You see, let me tell you this. Dishonor is a sound in the realm of the spirit. And there are forces, there are spiritual immigration officers assigned to detect it. Whether it is done in the secret or done in the open. You are trying to be a billionaire and you see a billionaire who started his story by sleeping on the ground. And you do not know the various forces he combined to rise. You just say all these corrupt people, foolish people. That sound is registered in the realm of the spirit. And any day you want to open the realm of wealth, that book of remembrance is open. This guy, based on his dishonor, is not authorized access. Remember favor again, unusual access. Please listen very carefully. There are many people who want to walk in certain dimensions, but they never honor and appreciate those who are carrying that grace. They just feel what is there. I want to walk in the healing anointing, and yet anything that looks like a healing anointing, I just insult it. I want, I'm trusting God to get a great place like this. What is there? A good land. Maybe they just gave him, I'm sure somebody just sowed a seed. You see, let me tell you the truth. Whether you say it to his hearing or you say it in the secret, the laws of the spirit don't sleep. I want you to know why many people have programmed woes over their lives. They are carrying self-inflicted causes by reason of dishonor. Especially this, our generation of young people who don't have any regard for successful people. Anybody just feels, oh no, this one, yeah, nothing is really working, it's just like that. Please practice honor. Your mother and your father, the Bible says, honor your, your father and your mother that it may be well with you and that you may live long. You will be surprised. You may be looking at your mother feeling she didn't go to school. She's not your kind. You've traveled abroad. One day you will come and package something and say, Mama, I just want to honor you. And she may just laugh casually and say, where I failed, may you never fail. As simple as that is, is a blessing that is released through honor, registered in the realm of the spirit, and it will follow you. Where your mother failed, if it was delay that kept her down, when delay comes to you, her prophetic word will stand as a gate. This person should not go through this. You have access to speed by reason of honor. I'm showing you how spiritual laws work. He told Job, he said, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth? They know not, he says, Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and the foundations of the earth are out of course. Honor. Number two. The second key that activates the flow of favor. Are you ready for this? Integrity. Please write it down. Integrity. Proverbs 27. Integrity. Integrity comes from the word integer. It means sameness. Unbendedness. 
integrity he says the just man walketh in his integrity his children are blessed after him his children there does not just mean his biological children your child is anything that comes out of you your ideas your inventions he says because you walk in your integrity anything that comes out of you is empowered to prosper there are many believers who do not have integrity and yet we continue to claim favor and hope it will work. No. Number three, for sake of time, good understanding bringeth favor. But the way of the transgressor, the transgressor is not a sinner. The transgressor is a perpetual violator of God's principles. Are you ready? The third key that activates favor in the life of an individual is called value and contribution proverbs 18 16 value and contribution i can assure you to the degree to which you are valuable and you contribute to the well-being of men spiritually economically sociologically that is the degree to which you drive this favor from your life please read with me what is written here let's hurry up we have just a few minutes ready one to read a man's gift will make room for him. He didn't say we'll bring him before men. Your gift is a promoter. It can bring you before a class of people called great men. Hallelujah. A man's gift, spiritually, a man's gift, intellectually, a man's gift, economically, a man's gift always what is your gift anything that constitutes an advantage in your life and can be deployed to be a blessing is a gift how many believers want favor in their life and they ignore it and yet you find out that there are people who may subscribe to this you do not see a gifted man who loves god and has refined his ability with honor and dignity and then leave that person in shame it may not always be so i'm showing you the keys please do not forget number one honor number two integrity number three value and contribution in most corporations of who stays or who goes hmm. number four the fourth key to activating favor in the life of a man is the power of relationships you are as favored as your relationships it is true the word be fruitful means be relational you cannot be fruitful without being relational please listen very carefully i submit to you that in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but in this world of men who likes you matters are we together the king hates a woman and she stops being queen almost immediately because one man not god oh, a king hated vashti and that was the end of her story and then the king decides to like a village girl called hadassah from shushan and she becomes queen and remains queen the king decides to like a wicked man called her man and he remains at his chamber even though he was a wicked man but he was a victim of the love of the king the king decides to not really like a man called Mordecai even though he was a righteous and a good man and yet he remained at the gate the day the king switched they also switched listen the heaven of heavens are the Lord's but the earth has he given to the sons of men there are people today whose prayer request of decades was answered at the instance of a relationship everything in this kingdom operates on the strength of your relationship first your relationship with god through his spirit your relationship with mentors fathers your relationship with strategic destiny helpers you are as strong as your connections strategic relationships hallelujah this is very powerful 
when God wants to bless you, among the many ways he blesses you is to shorten the distance between you and the relationship that connects you to the next level. Let me ask you an honest question. Is there someone in your life today that you can call at any time and tell him I need help and he'll say right away over my dead body to watch you in this situation and not arise for you? If you do not have such a person, let me give you a prayer point. Use July and pray and say, Lord, I, I, out of 7.6 billion people, I am not that evil. Nobody considers me to be such a blessing that I am worth their waking up in the night. There are people who may not have money, but they are wealthier than those who have money because everybody who has money likes them. Are we together? Relationships is the hardest, is the hardest spiritual currency that we use to purchase things because you are as powerful as your relationship. Even when you fail, it's because of your relationship. If you go to hell, it's because of your relationship. If you go to heaven, relationship is that powerful. It is valid even after this life. Can I tell you? Those who hate everybody and say me is just the Holy Spirit I'm walking with. And you hate men, you don't greet anybody, you are not friendly, you don't care. When God pushes there, I don't care. I will, I will win alone with God. You are right. But your victory will remain in the realm of the Spirit. If it must find expression here, ask the angel what he was doing with Mary. As powerful as God is, he had to come through an angel and humble himself and explain politely to Mary. Mary said, how shall these things be? You need the partnership of my womb. You need to give me an explanation. He didn't annoy her. She had to say, be it unto me. Otherwise, he would have gone through another laborious journey of looking for another virgin. If God humbled himself to honor men, who are you to dishonor them? You see, some of this church thing we carry is why we keep suffering for nothing. Angels don't sign signatures. They are signed by men. One person can sign the 10 years of your life. Please assist. And that's it. Listen. If you walk back home tonight learning this, because some of you may need to call some people and say, sorry, yo, I've, I came to church. I, there are, listen. I wish I had the time. I would have shown you from Genesis 12, pastor, that God called Abraham and promised him everything from 12 verse 1 and 2 and asked him to leave and go he called an idol worshiper from all of the chaldeans is that true and he said he should go to a land and the bible says lot went with him god didn't call lot god didn't say find somebody to assist you lord said i had that something was coming on your head and I will be foolish enough to follow. By the time we get to Genesis 13, we don't know who was blessed and who tapped from who because both the blessed one and the person who followed by relationship had the same thing. They got to a point where their men started fighting but the foolishness of Lot was he forgot that it was relationship. The Bible says Abraham met him and said, we be brethren. Let us not fight. Choose for yourself. Because for me, location does not matter. I'm the one carrying it. But you choose anywhere. Lot did not discern what Abraham was saying. Please listen. We're wrapping up. And the Bible says Lot looked at a place. It was lush near Sodom. The first decision Lot took without the support of his relationship ended him in trouble by the time abraham will come to rescue him he was still the same relationship he met him at the center of sodom he was still um in touch with the god of heaven yet he was a victim of the absence of relationship even the god he was serving needed to bring a relationship to rescue him can i tell you there are people you should never allow yourself fight with swallow your pride and say sorry they are too important to allow ego push them out of your life you will suffer in a way it will look as if god does not exist 
this is the foolishness that's respectfully speaking there are many people today who are ordained for greatness but lack of this wisdom what is there with my let me tell you what the one of the the classic ways that the devil destroys people and makes them to abort their destinies listen please listen deliverance 101 when satan wants to attack you the first thing he does is to scan out you and them and cut you away from them as at the time is happening you will not know that the goal is not that conflict the goal is an eventual attack on your life or your business when he uses your dishonor to cut you away from every person then he now attacks you because in your pride you may not be able to rush and go back again and so you stay there pick a hot coal from fire and just drop it don't pour water don't do anything what happens to it it starts going down the fire is because of the togetherness there are people as soon as they got a job the holy spirit spoke to them oh make sure you listen to your pastor what do i listen again and you are just laughing the devil is planning to attack you and he makes you to downplay and trivialize the relationship God has connected you to listen when Hagar left home Hagar left home in anger because you remember what was happening and she was right because Sarah was jealous and angry let me tell you this when the Lord met her in the desert remember her baby was crying she was crying do you know what the lord told her he said go back and submit to your mistress uh -uh. god did you not see all the shouting and the headache that woman was giving me he said if you want to prosper go back submit yourself to your mistress for someone this is your message tonight go back go back you can be in this church respectfully speaking and not be genuinely connected god is speaking to you go back go back means sit tonight and say who is this man that god brought to my life he may be laughing with me every day we may be hugging ourselves we may even be eating hallelujah one of the reasons why i have profound regard for the woman of God is because of her recognition that although maritally she is his wife but she realizes when that grace comes and she opens up her heart to receive it let me tell you a story I have just about eight minutes and we'll pray listen carefully true story many years ago I was in a conference and then a man of God shared this story what was the story that in a church like this the man of God and his wife things were not happening in their lives at all favor zero in their family yet in the church doors were opening people would come and testify pastor prayed for me and because you see the anointing upon you does not work for you until you become a you humble yourself the same way a member humbles themselves that's the only reason the anointing will work on you the anointing that is upon your office does not respond to um you, just because you are the carrier no listen the tanker that carries fuel it does not foil it from the tanker it must queue too to receive the foil even though it is a tanker carrying the foil so don't you say that i'm carrying the anointing it will work for me i listen to my own messages and i get down on my knees and i lift my hands when that man of god is prophesying let me finish my story hmm. so one time they were how could you be excelling in church you would speak over people but at home things were going down one day it was a service like this pastor true story and the man of god's wife got up and just walked out imagine the woman of god just getting up to walk out ah, people wonder and say what happened even him he was concerned he finished service very quickly finished counseling and he rushed home honey what is wrong did i say something did i did i do something on stage she didn't answer a word he sat down at the table to eat and the next thing she came to serve his meal and he noticed the tray had changed 
He said, what is all this one? We've been married for how many years? Let's please bring food for me. I'm, I'm, you know. And she brought a different kind of cup. Brought everything until she dropped the last item. And she got down on her knees. She said, servant of God, my home is in trouble. The man said, suddenly, the same anointing he felt on the pulpit came there and he laid hands. This is his wife. But she said, I have not been enjoying the grace upon this man of God because all he has been to me is my husband. Listen, all men are multidimensional. The part you relate with is the part that blesses you. If you relate with your brother alone, the man of God can be a prophet, but the only thing you will get from a brother is stories about how the family is faring. That is a brother's reward. Is someone learning now? How many people are making maximum impact across the globe and yet some of the closest people to them only know them as friends, classmates, tribesmen, colleagues, relationships are powerful but beware of the dimension you are relating with. Relate with all the possible dimensions invested in that man that makes for your glory. Are we together? <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number five. What is the fifth key to activating favor? Favor provoking prayers. I sat at the rotunda and I listened to Pastor Jerry as he prayed and just prophesied and he was speaking from the depth of his heart. I said, oh dear, look how powerful this is. You can use prayers to provoke favor. Psalm 23. You read from verse 4 to 6, but verse 6 for sake of time. Psalm 23. It says, surely. Everybody say, surely. surely. I am not doubting this one. Surely, with certainty, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not 30 years into my life and it will stop. All the days, he says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You can turn that into a favor-provoking prayer. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Listen, you can pray your way. I prayed for one month, Pastor. It was a February. From February 1st till the 28th of that February that year, I prayed favor every day when it came. I knew it had come. You can pray favor. Lord, I'm tired of this situation. Something has to change. It is not my background. I reject it. You are praying from the depth of your heart. You hold hands with your wife. You hold hands with your business partner. You hold hands with your prayer partner. And you pray. You will be surprised how things begin to change. Let me give you the final one. The final key to receiving favor and activating it is impartation. Impartation. Oh yes, impartation. Impartation is a big mystery. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. We're wrapping up now. Impartation. Philippians 1, 7. Apostle Paul was speaking and he said, Ye are all partakers of my grace. Ye are all partakers of my grace. When you study Esther chapter 2, you will find out that many young ladies were called. They were about to go and present themselves. Can you imagine how many ladies and only one person the king was going to choose? All the ladies must have been learning all the things they believed they would do in front of the king. The Bible says, Esther met Haggai, who was the keeper of the king's virgins. And she gave him a certain, she gave her a certain kind of oil. He said, I know the king. I know what he wants. Keep rubbing this oil on your body for one year. Go and stand before him. There was a certain kind of oil that Esther began to rub. Give us Esther 2 verse 15, please. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The Bible says,
and Esther obtained favor. Please be sensitive now. I just have like four minutes, but something is going to come on people now. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of how many? I forgot to tell you, favor works with the power of sight. When favor is at work in you, the only person who may not be able to help you is a blind man. But for as long as they can set their eyes on you, it's in your Bible. She obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17, Esther 2 and 17. Even the king could not resist it. And the king loved Esther above all. That means before she came, there were others he was considering. As soon as she arrived, everything that had happened before her arrival did not matter again. The Bible says she obtained grace and favor in the sight more than all the virgins. Impartation. Can I tell you? There is a real grace for favor. Believe me when I tell you. When the grace for favor comes upon you, it works like HIV. HIV is not what kills you. HIV opens the door and keeps it open for any other sickness. That's how favor works. So favor opens the door. Speed, you can come in. Breakthrough, you can come in. Whatever it is, you can come in. The assignment of favor is to keep the door of kindness, the door of acceptance, and the door of access open. Is someone ready to open that door? Jump up on your feet. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be alone. Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the setting of Now, please listen. According to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8, every time God releases an anointing upon one person, it was never supposed to remain with that one person. When he sends a word to Jacob, it is because he intends it to be lightened upon Israel. In the next, I know that our time is gone, but one minute, what did you put, O oh God, upon this man? that you brought him even to the good land and gave him this estate what did you put upon this woman of god what did you put upon every vessel that has preached here i open up my spirit it's time to receive go ahead and pray that grace for favor someone pray Someone pray, someone pray. You can carry. Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored. I am walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am I am walking in abundance with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favor. One more time, someone is praying. I am walking in abundance. Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favor. What then is the anointing for favor? The anointing of favor is the anointing for kindness, provoking unusual kindness, provoking unusual acceptance. I'm about to speak over your life. Our time is gone. But hear me by the Spirit of God. I'm standing in partnership with the grace upon the angel of this house and his wife. That if you can believe with childlike faith, 
in addition to all the graces that I've spoken over you you will marvel and wonder at what God does are you ready to receive in the name of Jesus the son of the living God listen listen in the parable of the ten virgins please listen listen in the parable of the ten virgins there was nothing wrong with their lamp the problem was the oil their lamps were still fine the lamp does not burn on its own it burns because of the oil that the foolish ones now said please give me of your oil and he said no we will have insufficiency ourselves but we have an advice for you he says go to them that sell and buy please hear me there are them that sell you don't buy it with money you buy it with discernment you buy it with honor you buy it with meekness you buy it with open-heartedness go to them that sell there are men of God who need to go to them that sell. There are businessmen who need to go to them that sell. How do you know them that sell? You know them that sell by the results that surrounds their life. I can tell you by the privilege of God's grace, standing in faith with your man of God, there are them that sell. You have lifted that currency of discernment. You have lifted that currency of humility. You have lifted that currency of meekness. Now you are ready to receive. In the name of Jesus, I stand by the God of heaven who helps men. And I speak over someone here. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, from tonight, carry the grace for unusual kindness. Padikesh kele tariasa. May that grace rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Carry the grace for unusual acceptance. Acceptance in the east, acceptance in the west, acceptance in the north, acceptance in the south, acceptance in Europe, acceptance in America, global acceptance. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, carry the grace that makes for unusual access. Access to resources, access to men, access to opportunities. In the name of Jesus. Hear me? For someone here, by this time tomorrow, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you will come and stand here and it's your tears of joy that will be giving the testimony. Every man of God here, woman of God, who has been grounded, it looks like your life is not moving forward. By this force of favor, I push you prophetically. Go forward. Go forward in ministry. Go forward in business. Go forward in career. Go forward. Hear me. Any force that has fought you before now, in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, I command that it falls like Dagon before the ark. And finally, I stand in faith here. And I decree and declare, just have those under the anointing. We don't have the time. Every grace that God has placed upon Pastor Yemi David and his wife, I agree with them and I decree we stand as a threefold cord. Good land, hear me. In the name of Jesus, between now and the end of 2022, carry grace, carry favor with evidence, carry favor with proof, carry favor with evidence in the name of Jesus Christ hear me I pray for you finally I just felt stead to do this the greatest favor you have is your relationship with the Holy Spirit 
may nothing destroy it may money not destroy it may fame not destroy it may lifting not destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord bless you from tonight carry this mentality I have unusual kindness I have unusual acceptance and in the name of Jesus I have unusual access God bless you in Jesus name. dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye